The Tribal Health and Human Services Department of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes is proud to present Good Medicine, a program dedicated to the wellness of the Flathead Nation. The mission is summarized quite simply, a healthier people, a stronger nation. We will strive to make Good Medicine a reliable source of ideas and information about health issues so that everyone can make informed decisions about their own lifestyle and health care. You will meet health professionals, tribal government and spiritual leaders, and interesting people from the tribal community discussing important health issues that profoundly affect us all. Hello, this is Good Medicine. I'm your host, Larry Pitts, and uh, today we'll be talking about the subject about tribal health. Today my guest is Paul Coates, a nurse practitioner, as he seems to be the only one who has enough intestinal fortitude to come on here. <laughs> Paul, is there anybody you want to say hello to? Just hello to everybody out there. It's uh, good to be back on the airwaves. Good to be sitting next to you, Larry. Hey, it's, it's my pleasure, and you're one of my favorite men, you know that. So, Paul, let's get going with um, the topic at hand. That's tribal health. Um, you know, tribal health has been going through lots of changes in the uh, last few months, and um, new things are happening down there. Um, you want to talk about what's been happening down there? And sure. maybe why just a little bit? Sure, Larry. There have been a lot of changes going on, and I feel really optimistic about some of the things that have been going on. Um, change is certainly nothing new to tribal health, at least uh, over the last four years that I've been there. I really have a sense today that the changes that are being put in place are taking us in a good direction, and I feel like we're building a solid uh, platform for our future. The whys about uh, why some of these changes have uh, been going on really have to do with a bigger crisis in health care not only here on the reservation but across the country and th you know we've heard a lot in the media over the last couple of years about health care crisis health care reform there's been lots of different things out there you get this uh, kind of alphabet soup like HMO and PPO and mm -hmm. DRG and there's all of these different things that have been part of this health care crisis reshuffling for us as a as a tribal health department what we've been faced with is a limited amount of money a limited amount of resources and a big job to do out there and we've struggled over the past several years to find the best way to use our resources wisely mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the people out there and um, I think that what we are working on now really shows a lot of promise for uh, being able to meet healthcare needs for people, to do it in a way that uh, really empowers people in their communities and that also makes sure that people are taken care of in a good way. Mm -hmm. You know, as what you just stated to sort of reiterate what you said is, this is not just tribal health that's changing. The whole health field is changing. You know, like you said, HMOs, everything else on the, you know, all the initials on the board are being brought out as new ways and new direction. Um, the uniqueness of tribal health is that we are nonprofit. Right. Do you see that as a positive right now? I mean, I do. If you're in the business of healthcare to make money. Uh, then you're going to be doing things in such a way so that you get the biggest amount of money rolling mm -hmm. through. And that is not always in the best interest of, of uh, the patient or the clients that you're trying to serve. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in it for the business, then the more services, the better. Mm -hmm. um, what that can translate into for people is more dependence, 
over-reliance on uh, people like you and me, which is a bad idea. You and I know that. Mm -hmm. um, Only so many hours in a day. That's true. And by being nonprofit, that lets us focus our attention on taking care of those needs that of those needs that aren't being met mm -hmm. um, in other ways. And so there's some things that we might spend our time and money on that nobody else would touch because it's too expensive or it doesn't it's not profitable to do that. And some of those things might be um, doing a home visit to an elder out in Camas Prairie. Um, hospitals aren't going to want to do that or these big health corporations aren't going to want to do that because there's no money in it. Mm -hmm. But for us as a, as a tribal health department, that elder out in Camas Prairie or wherever he or she happens to be is really important and it's worth it to us to go out there, invest the time, invest the money to do that. And I think that with what we're putting together now, we can do these kinds of things. Well, it, seemed to be, it seems to be a value structured system. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. You know, and we're trying to put value to each individual as well as we can serve them and bring them into the overall scheme. Yeah. You know, what kinds of uh, goals is Tribal Health uh, reaching for? And I know we got a graphic that's going to be coming up with this, and so. Well, the main goals that we're wanting to do is give power back to the communities and to really encourage people to take care of themselves in the best way possible. And what we as a tribal health department are wanting to do is to meet those unmet needs mm -hmm. out there. Um, if you drive around the reservation, you'll see that there's uh, two hospitals, there's lots of doctor's offices, there's physical therapy offices, there's health food stores, there's a lot of uh, health-related things out there. And they're taking care of a lot of the health needs, and that's a good thing. And we don't want to get in the way of people accessing those kinds of services. What we want to do is find the places where the needs aren't being met and focus our attention in those places so that full quality can be had by our people. Mm -hmm. Now, as you, you were talking about that, I guess the thing that I was looking at is these are covering huge basic needs. Mm -hmm. Now, has the tribal health negotiated with these basic needs outfits to uh, get a better dollar maybe like the HMOs are doing or? Well, there are, there's been a lot of activity and I'm not even aware of all of it that's been going on. But I know that uh, one of the efforts that has been going on as a part of this change process is the tribes have been going out and talking to some of the some of the bigger uh, provider groups like mm -hmm. uh, Western Montana Clinic and the St. Pat's outfit. They've talked with folks in Kalispell, uh, in Missoula, different uh, different companies and organizations that provide healthcare services, and they've said, "What can you offer us?" for our people and uh, what kinds of discounts are you willing to provide us if we uh, happen to send people to you. And I think that most of those organizations, they're businesses. They're wanting to get the, the dollars that we're trying to protect. And so they're, uh, they're making some good offers. And I think that those negotiations are coming along. And it's actually creating a setting to where um, as a tribal health department, we're having a lot more say-so in, ter in terms of what kinds of services we can get from these outfits, and it also gives us a say-so in the quality mm -hmm. of services, and it gives us a chance to uh, encourage these, uh, these organizations to be culturally sensitive, mm -hmm. and with these contracts that are being negotiated, we've got some leverage that we can use to get what we're looking for. And leverage is the name of the game in this day and age. It's part of it. You it know, sure is. You know, to go with the value, you've got to have the resource with you. And uh, how is this going to help serve our people in the future? Do you see? I mean, uh, what is what is the goal for tribal health? The goal for tribal health is to use our uh, resources, both dollar-wise and people-wise, in as smart a way as possible to meet the unmet health needs that our tribal people have. 
Um, we want to do this in people's communities and we, we really want to uh, help encourage people that have nothing to do with tribal health. We're talking about elders and our family members and the traditional people out there to become more active resources for those folks in the community. And um, so hopefully the goal is that our our nation will become stronger and that people will feel more powerful within their own homes, within their own communities. Okay. How are these communities broken up? You were talking about community health teams a minute ago. Mm. Um, let's address that right now. Um, it's sort of a unique idea. Mm -hmm. One of the kind of creative things that has come up, um, if you look at the uh, graphic that is available to us, we've got kind of an outline of the reservation. And uh, on that graphic, you'll see that there are some different uh, areas identified. There's Elmo, Dayton area, which also includes hot springs, and that's covered by a community health team that includes a public health nurse and uh, three CHRs and one secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys are located in a tribal clinic in Elmo, but that's just where the clinic facility is. Those people are covering that whole area. They're out in the communities, finding out what the needs are, uh, hustling around, trying to get those needs met. In the Elmo area, I think we're fortunate to have uh, Julie Surstad as a public health nurse. We've got Chrissy Ewing and Lydia Hwankorn serving as uh, community health representatives, primarily in the Elmo Dayton areas. And out in Hot Springs, which it's, is sometimes mm -hmm. easy for us to forget, mm -hmm. we've got a wonderful woman, Gloria Rich, who is out there um, serving as a community health representative to the Hot Springs area. Mm -hmm. um, Moving a little bit farther south in Polson, uh, the public health nurse for that community team is Lori Meeks, mm -hmm. and uh, you yourself have just uh, acquired a new job as one of the community health representatives for the Polson community. Mm -hmm. Helen Ryan has also joined you in that, and uh, your job, should you choose to accept it, is to go out there and see what's going on in the community and meet those needs. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit farther south in Ronan and Pablo, there since there's since there's a lot of people in those areas, we have two uh, public health nurses, Barb Ploof and Wendy Duran. Mm -hmm. um, they work with uh, Char Hunter, who is a community health representative, and also Marla Santos. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're based in the uh, tribal health building that's behind Dairy Queen there, so you can swing by after you get a blizzard. And that's right. It's, always nice. <laughs> it's a reward. It's a reward. And uh, Carol Buck is, is in there serving as a secretary, and Carol uh, does a really fine job of coordinating things. Mm -hmm. I also want to mention up in uh, Polson, yes. <laughs> uh, the the uh, secretary up there is Mary, you might have to help me with her last Polite. name. Polite. Mm -hmm. And I've just gotten to know Mary, and she's a delightful person and seems mm -hmm. to be doing a great job she, up she's there. She's Susie Antis' daughter. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Give well, a little lineage here. That, ex that explains <laughs> yes, things. Yes, right. That's that right. explains things. Um, further down south, um, we've also got another large area that includes uh, St. Ignatius, St. Ignatius, Charlotte, Dixon, uh, Arley, Evero, that whole kind of southern block of the reservation. That is being uh, shared with, uh, by Joellen Morjo, who primarily covers the Arley and South part of the reservation, and Kathy Salloway, who uh, covers Mission and uh, Charlotte and those areas. Those folks get their help from um, Bev Linsbigler, Mary Jane Billadu, uh, Nancy Grant, and Lynn Hendrickson is also a CHR. That was a surprise to me, there. but that was uh -huh. great to hear. Yeah, and it's, it's great to have Lynn out in the communities those ways. Um, the, for that southern uh, chunk of the res, the facilities at the, um, the Tribal Health Building in St. Ignatius are used, and Mona Ebensteiner is the secretary that kind of keeps all of that coordinated. Now, 
these community health teams are powerful mm -hmm. and uh, people in those different communities, I really want to encourage folks to feel free to contact those individuals, whether it's the CHRs or the PHNs, and let them uh, know if there's a need that needs to be met. And those folks will do their best to be responsive, to be flexible, to get the job done that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, as I see it too, you know, since I'm new in the, in the position, mm -hmm. um, we're advocates. Exactly. You know, we're advocates for the resources that are out there, that if we know we can get in touch with NetLink, mm -hmm. um, through other programs, um, health needs, as you said, we're, we're trying to find out ways to help people, with, whether it's prenatal, um, WIC, uh, diabetic foot care, this type of thing, but that leads me right into my next question. Mm. You know. What's going on with WIC? What about the fitness centers? You know, I used to work for the fitness centers. Lynn was running mm -hmm. the fitness center. What are happening with these people? How do they fit in? We got Dennis um, Webster sitting up there in Ronan, Montana, getting more gray hair. You know, it's. Um, <laughs> Well, myself, the fitness center staff, WIC, all of these folks, what we become is a resource to the different community health teams. Mm -hmm. And with, with uh, I'll take WIC and myself as an example, as a clinical person, um, the WIC staff will go around to um, each one of the kind of community health team centers and provide services to those communities. Um, on a regular schedule. For my own clinical services, I go out one day a week and uh, see patients in Elmo, in Ronan, in Polson, in St. Ignatius, mm -hmm. and um, we're there to take care of the things that the people in the communities identify they need taken care of. Okay. And so all of us kind of background people, we're there to support, to kind of be, uh, to be the people that can come in and provide the specific kinds of services, whether that's social work or WIC or uh, uh, medical services, fitness services, we're there to support the communities in their in their uh, pursuit of wellness. Pursuit of wellness. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. That'd be pursuit of wellness. That's that's a good one. Um, you mentioned the four different communities that you're going to be in. Hmm. You're in each one one day a week. Mm -hmm. What about that fifth day? That fifth day is kind of rover day for me. Okay. And uh, that leaves me free to go out and do that home visit to Camas Prairie that I was talking about earlier. Or uh, maybe one of the schools wants to have me come in and do a talk or do an educational program. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there is um, special projects or uh, grants that um, my services might be needed on. Mm -hmm. um, they're keeping that one day flexible so that if there is a special need, I can respond to that. Well, you don't have anything called paperwork, do you? Oh, I got plenty of paperwork, yeah. So it's a good day to help catch up to? If I need to, but I try not to give paperwork too high priority. Oh, I understand that. I've heard yeah. that from, from our paper people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you see um, the future as far as um, this working as far as, where's it gonna go? Hopefully it's going to uh, be kind of this organic thing that just grows and, and uh, becomes more comfortable and more powerful as time goes on. Um, I think we'll call it a success when people feel like their needs are being taken care of when people feel like they can come to any one of us at Tribal Health and feel like they're being responded to in mm -hmm. a responsible way. Um, there's always going to be sickness, there's always going to be hard things that happen, but if we, can, if we can deliver care and services in a compassionate way and in a, in a way that uh, really helps people to be powerful in their homes, in their communities, I think it'll be a success. How has it gone so far? I mean, sitting back, you know, Paul Coates, nerd practitioner, you know, boy wonder, sitting back looking at this new model, is it working well? So far, um, so far, I think it's working fairly well. Um, it's a big change, and there's there's a lot of 
uh, confusion that's been going on. For example, I was reading in the Charcusta that uh, there was a letter to the editor saying that uh, you know, what's going on with transportation, that our community health representatives are no longer doing transportation. Um, the truth about that is, you bet, we're still doing transportation. We're doing it for people that have a, a clear medical need and who don't have other resources mm -hmm. to do that. Um, we want people to get to their doctor's appointment. We want people to be able to get the care that they need. We also want people to um, look around and see what other resources. If you can get a ride down to Missoula with a family member, we think that's better mm -hmm. than um, having a CHR or somebody else do the ride transportation. <laughs> but if it's definitely better to go with a family member to ride with you, Larry. That's then. right. Um, but if the need is there, then yeah, we want to be responsive and we want to be flexible to meet that need. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, you know, there's there there's is other resource on the reservation. What other types of transportation are the kind of resource do we have? Well, I've been really impressed with the kinds of services available from SKC's transportation outfit. Um, they've done a really good job, and and I've heard from people that have ridden the SKC. Um, bus, and they say it's pretty good time, pretty mm -hmm. safe driver, mm -hmm. um, and so that's a formal resource. Um, there, Medicab. There's Medicab, and uh, there's a whole bunch of of uh, concerned and loving family, people, and relations, and friends that a lot of times would love mm -hmm. to be able to help out with a ride or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you've hit a lot of good things about tribal health right now. Mm. I'm going to get one that's just hit the news service. And uh, we had bought into the program pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. And now we hear all this stuff about FenFen. -fen. Mm. Can you shed some light on, on what tribal health is doing towards FenFen? -fen? And, you know, if there's somebody out there saying they just saw this news report and they're all worried. Can you tell us, Paul? Well, I think the media has been saying that FinFin fin has been pulled from the market, and that's uh, half true. Uh, there, in the weight management program that we were doing at Tribal Health, we used the combination of fin fluoramine and a second medication called fentramine. And we've known from the outset that these were powerful and serious medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, what has happened, which has caused the FDA to pull the finfluramine, which are the little orange pills part of the diet uh, of the diet pill combination, um, there's been some new information that has surfaced relatively recently about a danger of a heart valve problem mm -hmm. associated with the finfluramine. We had known for a long time that there had been some trouble with something called pulmonary hypertension, which is more of a lung problem connected with the finfluramine. Um, and that is something that has been a big concern of mine from the get-go and has been one of the reasons why in our clinics we've been pretty, uh, well, some people have said we've been a pain in the butt because we keep making people come back to get checked to make sure these things haven't gone on. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy and I feel uh, that we've been lucky in that none of our people have had serious problems with these medications. Um, and the other thing that uh, has surfaced is that uh, finfluramine and the new medication that is a cousin to finfluramine, um, which is called dexfinfluramine or redux, <laughs> redux is how we understand. Is uh, also been taken off the market, and it's for the same kinds of concerns. There's also been a concern about uh, brain damage connected with the redux. Mm -hmm. So the finfluramine is off the market, and people nowhere will be able to obtain those medications. For those of you that have been on those medicines, I think that the thing to do is to get with your health care provider, uh, discuss what what needs to be done in coming off of those medicines. My own personal recommendation is that if you've been on the finfluramine for any length of time, that you gradually try and taper yourself down. It's, uh, it's uh, not a good idea to abruptly cut, cut yourself off. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the other half of the diet pill combination, the fentramine, uh, does not have the same kinds of concerns that go along with it as the fenfluramine does. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, um, it has been exciting to see many people be able to make some changes in their weight and uh, I'm looking forward to the time when medicine is able to come up with some more safe, safe. medications to help people in this way because it's a, it's a big problem and it's something that a lot of people have struggled with. You know what, it amazes me how many people want to look like me. <laughs> <laughs> scary. It is scary. About a minute to close up here, Paul. Um, what's the future of Tribal Health? I think that the future of Tribal Health is in your hands and my hands and uh, basically it's in each individual tribal members and descendants hands. I think that it's so important that we get out of a mentality that says um, health is not my responsibility, it's not my job. I believe that what happens in the future depends on how much we invest and how much we try and take care of ourselves and how much we work together with one another in a cooperative teamwork kind of a fashion. If we're going to point fingers and lay blame and be throwing around accusations, that's a really unhealthy thing for anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's it's up to us in many ways. Show them mercy and some hope. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. One last question for us, Paul, and it's, then we can let you go. Is You've been married for almost one year now. I have. It's, it's coming up real soon. How has it been? It has been great. I love my wife, I love my family, and uh, I just feel so grateful to be alive, and um, uh, the Creator's been just really generous with me. Thanks for asking. All right. It's great. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and I want to thank everybody out there for watching. I hope this was informative, and if you have any questions, you can direct them to Tribal Health in San Ignatius, Montana at 1-800-823-8228, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Good day. Good Medicine is your program. We hope you watch this and subsequent programs to stay informed about your health care. And we'd like to hear from you about how we're doing. Please direct any comments or suggestions you have to us. You can reach us at...